Do you have a suggestion for a rock star impact podcast guest? Go to impactpodcast.com and just click be a guest to recommend someone today. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. This episode of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Closed Loop Partners. Closed Loop Partners is a leading circular economy investor in the United States with an extensive network of Fortune 500 corporate investors, family offices, institutional investors, industry experts, and impact partners. Closed Loop's platform spans the arc of capital from venture capital to private equity, bridging gaps, and fostering synergies to scale the circular economy. To find Closed Loop Partners, please go to www.closedlooppartners.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. This is a very, very special edition. This might be called the greenest edition of all. This is the St. Patrick's Day special edition. And we've got with us today, Adam McKenna. He's the regional director and our returning guest uh, of, of the Impact Podcast. He's the regional director of Americas for the Enterprise Island organization. We've got Kieran Ivers with us. He's the CEO of Green Rebel. And he, we also have Kahal Foley, the CEO of Pace. Welcome, gentlemen, for the greenest episode ever in, in seven our 17-year history. Welcome to the Impact Podcast. Thank you very much, John. It's great to be back on the show, and it's uh, fantastic that I'm joined by two fantastic Enterprise Ireland client companies. Kieran and Cahill are uh, going to join us for the conversation today, so thank you for having us back on this auspicious day. You made this happen, Aiden. So my my gratefulness is to you, and for our listeners and viewers who didn't have the the pleasure of uh, of seeing your last episode when you made your first appearance on the Impact Podcast, can you share a little bit about uh, Enterprise Island and and how it came to being organized and what your actual mission is? Absolutely, John. So yeah, so again, just Enterprise Ireland, we are the organization based in Ireland that supports indigenous Irish owned and operated startups uh, and companies, and we help them scale and grow internationally. So our mission is really to accelerate the development of world-class Irish companies on the global stage and get them to be market leaders in their own right. And we do that in a number of ways. We, we, we invest in some of these Irish companies we have a network of uh, offices around the world, such as Manhattan, where I'm based here today, uh, that support them break into new markets, find customers, find partners, and help them on that scale and journey. We also do a lot of capability supports for the Irish companies, and we support them access growth capital as well to help them on that scale and journey. So in total, John, we probably have close to 5,000 Irish companies that, that we support and work with closely. And we also uh, probably invest in about 150 startups per year. So we are, by deal flow, the largest VC in Europe uh, in terms of the investments we make in Irish companies. And I guess that's most relevant for this episode and for your, your listeners here in the US. We have about 900 companies actually actively working in the US with customers, with partners. And those companies probably collectively employ about 100,000 American uh, uh, em employees. So we have a significant presence here in, in, in the US. I think we are actually the ninth largest FDI investor uh, for such a small country like Ireland. It's uh, We have really, really strong ties. So again, thank you for having us on the show. We're going to hear more from Kieran and Cahill 
and uh, we absolutely learn a little bit more about Enterprise Ireland and how we can support these companies. Oh, Aiden, thank you. And, you know, I don't know how you keep it straight. I mean, I know you have uh, Enterprise Ireland, like you said, represents 5,000 great Irish companies around the world. But to have, I have two children and keeping track of them is enough to have 900 uh, children that you're incubating here, so to speak, in in, in, in the United States. It's it's uh, what you do is 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 more than impressive and how you do it. And, uh, and we're going to get to that in a little while. Kieran, can you share a little bit about the Green Rebel and how you got started and how it got started in Ireland? How many years old is, is that enterprise? And where are you now in your journey uh, um, with uh, Green Rebel? Yeah, sure, uh, John. And look, it's it's great on the greenest day of all to have a uh, Green Rebel uh, as part of that. So thank you for having us. Um, yes, yeah, so Green Rebel, uh, we're um, a, a relative Irish startup. We started about four years ago. Um, kind of a series of chance meetings, a series of pub conversations, no doubt, uh, looking ahead uh, in terms of Ireland's journey towards renewables and towards decarbonisation. Offshore wind is becoming a very real thing uh, on the island. Uh, to give context to Green Rebel, maybe just to give some context to Ireland. Ireland as a country, our economy to date has been very strongly built on pharma, built on tourism, uh, built on tech. And to date, there hasn't been a huge I suppose economic drive towards using our maritime environment in our maritime uh, space. So, like Ireland's maritime spatial area is seven times the size of its land mass. So, you know, the opportunity for offshore wind is massive. But without a legacy maritime industry, there isn't an opportunity for us to simply pivot from oil and gas and other areas to support offshore wind. So, Green Rebel was built to support offshore wind and um, in the renewable space. So. Uh, we built uh, a business of four years ago, five people in a little port cabin in a in a in a port town called Crossaven in County Cork, and very quickly we've established ourselves as one of Ireland's and indeed Europe's premier data acquisition companies. What we do is we acquire data, either seabed data, aerial ecology data, or wind resource data, which informs the development of offshore wind, whether that's the ecological impact of an offshore wind farm array or data that informs engineering design for a wind farm. So whilst we acquire all of this data with huge assets, with aeroplanes, with vessels, with 12 ton LIDAR buoys that go to sea, we are in effect a data company and data is one of Ireland's key strengths. So being able to offer these services uh, to support offshore wind is, I guess, what we do, you know. That's wonderful. And then, uh, Kahal, c can you share a little bit about what you do at Pace, how old the company is, and what the main mission of Pace is? Yeah, look, thanks for having uh, me on, John, and, and thanks, sure. Aidan, for, for the continued uh, support as well from the Enterprise Ireland side. I guess picking up a little bit more, Kieran said, that that data side. So, so we do, um, we took a step back from what was inevitable in our, in our eyes in the sustainability journey and, and saying what sort of technology solutions will be needed. So FEX was a 40-year-old fintech, but a 40-year-old fintech that has spawned many, many innovations and built many, many businesses uh, over the years. So we got an opportunity uh, in our innovation division to stand back and say what will be needed, what solutions will be needed um, to support the decarbonization uh, journey. So we looked at everything from carbon tax solutions to carbon credits mm. um, and really went you know, vision, vision standard on it and identified that you can't do anything without the data. So to Kieran's point, you can't, you can't implement any strategy. You can't deliver anything meaningful without having a solid starting position to measure. And you can't measure anything without, without adequate data. So through looking through some of the assets in the portfolio uh, of assets that we had, we identified aviation on two fronts. One, we had credentials in that we built uh, aviation uh, technology platform for the aviation working group with an aviation services business. And two, every plane has a transponder, so you're, you're guaranteed uh, that you have clean data and accurate uh, data. So we've built a platform for aviation financiers. Right, so that is people that finance aviation, something again, which Ireland is, is, is very much at the forefront of. But they finance those assets and don't control them. So they are on the hook. They're responsible for reporting the carbon emissions of those assets. But they don't necessarily know where they are and they don't have the capacity to obligate people to tell them on the emissions. So we offer that platform to large global uh, institutions from, from right here in Ireland. And we have um, you know many American banks uh, 
that are, that are on the platform, some of the largest financial institutions in the world. And building out on that measurement piece is how do we help people manage their path to net zero and ultimately mitigate uh, their emissions in due course. So we see it as a, as a huge, huge area for growth and you know continue to see um, success within the platform and building out other asset classes and other verticals from there, but all from that data journey. And how old approximately is Pace? How many years is the insulin? We started about three years ago at this stage um, with an idea. And, you know, I think scaling a business is one of the most rewarding and difficult things that you can ever do. And scaling it in an industry uh, which is just beginning to come to pass, right, in terms of the regulatory requirements, in terms of the legislation that is being mapped out. So it's been a real learning journey not only scaling the business, but scaling and informing the market and trying to you know, inform the market of the need of the product while scaling the business alongside. So I think it's been a hugely rewarding journey um, that we've been on. You know, one of the things that strikes me is I've only been going to Ireland for the last two years, and I've been not only blown away by the warmth and the wonderful people there that are so welcoming to American business people that want to do business in Ireland, but the the lush greenness of Ireland and the commitment to sustainability, is that something all three of you grew up with? Has that been part of culturally part of the DNA of Ireland going back now one or two generations? Because in the United States, this sustainability revolution and ESG revolution is just something that's relatively new. But it seems like it's been in Ireland and part of your DNA for quite some time. What, do you, what, what are your thoughts about that, any of you? Well, I'll jump in and I'll, of course, you know, I'm sitting in the most beautiful county in Kerry, which uh, which Kieran might have something to say about. But I think we literally, and, and not exaggerating when I say this, we've, a, we've a, a restaurant on our top floor and it's called the Reeks Restaurant. And it looks out in the beautiful mountains, McGillicuddy Reeks, um, you know, in Kerry. And I think you can but look at that view and say, well, actually, if we can solve really interesting problems and work with amazing technology and amazing people, it's all those things that need to go with it in a meaningful sense and help, you know, create a, a, a logical and meaningful path to net zero. Isn't that a great business to be working on? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly for me, it is. And it's, it is something that, that, that seems to be natural. It seems to be innate, um, you know, to Irish people. And we have a love of the outdoors. We have a love of our land. We're very proud of that. And I think it seems to kind of help uh, to help in, in terms of how we do it as well. I don't know what you think, Kieran. I would I would agree completely, Carl. I think you know Ireland has always innately had, um, you know that 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 close linkage with nature and that protection of nature. I think increasingly, uh, what we're seeing, um, is, you know, Ireland's um, impact on on global sustainability efforts is going to be disproportionately larger than uh, you know other countries, just simply based on the potential for, as I mentioned, offshore wind. I mean, Ireland. You know, in, in a European context, energy security is a very hot topic right now. And traditionally, energy has flowed from the east to the west when we're talking about oil, gas and coal. You know, Ireland and looking at the potential flow of energy from the west to the east now, as I said, will have a huge impact in, in the global efforts around sustainability. So, you know, I suppose it's taking that legacy kind of, um, you know, mantra around sustainability and and our impact on on the world now is 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 really really huge and it's true to support of enterprise ireland and irish government and now irish companies the ability to really put a footprint uh in this industry on a global context is is absolutely there you know uh kieran and a, 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 uh and kahal you 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 make certain amount of success in ireland with your business enterprise when do you decide to reach out to Aiden and say, this, we want this to be our next step in our journey, or does Aiden reach out to you? How does that work? Aiden, did, were these companies on your uh, radar uh, uh, because of their meteoric success in Ireland, or did they reach out to you and said, hey, we're doing well here. We want to go where you are now, and we want your help uh, bringing, uh, with Enterprise Ireland bringing us to America. Well, I might let the guys tell their own story in terms of how they uh, connected with Enterprise Ireland. They'll know it better than me, but uh, maybe just in, in part of uh, the, you know, the journey, our role overseas here is, is really to help accelerate and scale and, and help them scale that growth. The team back in Ireland 
are there at the very start. So, Kieran, I might start with you. It, it, your start story, yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's 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 only four years ago, but I suppose for full disclosure, I've had over fifteen years of experience working as an Enterprise Ireland uh, customer in in a previous role, a, a startup in in a technology space that through all the supports from Enterprise Ireland, including market access uh, grants and market access consultancy to to um, to to break the US market was a key value driver for us. So it was an absolute no brainer for us to continue working with Enterprise Ireland within the context of this new startup. I mean, I'm surprised Aidan in your intro, the sheer amount of customers that Enterprise Ireland are now representing because you know, the key the key value driver is the relationships that we build uh, either with our own account managers or with the people you guys have overseas, because we see those as extensions of our own capability, particularly our marketing capability in, in the emerging markets. So for us, it's typically, you know, you know, we do have a very proactive account manager around the capability supports because any company that grows to over 100 people in such a short space of time, those supports are very much needed. But in reaching out and looking at the US markets, looking at South African markets and others, uh, the extension and the ability for us to be almost like a blowfish in, in looking and sounding bigger than we actually really are has been hugely beneficial to us. You mentioned something really important. I don't want to just uh, uh, just glance over that, Kieran. You already had a great experience with Enterprise Island before in your last venture. John, not only that, but um, on the back of Enterprise Ireland supports, uh, I, I credit that to getting married, funnily enough. Uh, it's a side story. But uh, on, on a market entry um, event, um, I was I was able to uh, bring my then girlfriend kind of on a, on a uh, you know, a, a trip to the US, not under en Enterprise Ireland, did not fund that, by the way. Uh, but I got engaged on that trip. So I have Enterprise Ireland to thank for that. So yes, past experience is definitely an indicator for future success. It is, you've been with, holding uh, out on me. You never, oh, you never, I, we, we missed Valentine's Day, John. We should have had another episode. <laughs> <laughs> this is all, next year, you're, be, you're going to become the Valentine's special, Aiden. So right. this is not only going to be St. Patrick's special, you're going to start taking up a lot of the holidays here. <laughs> it's obvious. Um, uh, Paul, talk a little bit about how you got interconnected. Was it, was it Enterprise Island reaching out to you or you uh, having uh, directly reaching out to them or was it someone who connected you with them? So as I say, Pace is part of the Fexco group. So, you know, Fexco and EI have a, a relationship going back many, many years. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, it's been a, it's been an exceptionally beneficial relationship, hopefully for all sides, but certainly from a Fexco perspective. And again, one of the previous companies I was involved with within Fexco, it was in Asia and we interfaced with, uh, Aiden's Asian colleagues, again, in terms of market expansion. And I think, you know, it's building on something I was thinking coming on this ahead of St. Patrick's Day, right? Something the Irish always did really well when they were immigrating, was making sure that they had the support of, of that tribe around them as they showed up. And that's one thing that Enterprise Ireland absolutely does is helps us, you know, to, to use that, that blowfish analogy, seem bigger than we are, but sometimes feel uh, that we have the confidence to go to a market, right? Because we we can sometimes feel like we're, you know, the, the small island on the edge of Europe and actually to feel like, well, actually we do have a product and it is solving problems for global customers um, and making that first connection, which, you know, in business is is so important. You still have to have a product to sell. Your product still has to be good. You still have to be solving problems for customers and doing all the other stuff. It, it doesn't give you a free pass to just write them off, but it just can give you that little bit of an edge and that confidence to go and have that first conversation. And I think, you know, the reason that the, the numbers speak for themselves in Enterprise Ireland is that, that there are so many great companies that are just bursting to get exposure in our global sense. Uh, so we're very, very, um, you know, proud of the relationship we have, and I'm sure we'll have it for many, many years to come. Aiden, do you have a team of folks back in Ireland that are uh, uh, um, consistently tracking startups in Ireland and how mm -hmm. they're doing? So you're they're on your radar as they begin to launch and scale, and 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 you start building a relationship before they even contact you with regards to coming to the United States. Absolutely, John. We we have a. a pretty big team back at home and, and we have a team then that works very closely with our universities and our research community as well. So of the, the 161 startups that we invested in last year, 13 of them were, were actually spin outs of universities. So wow. we'll go right into the research projects. We'll look at what we can commercialize. We'll have a team that will work with 
uh, put forming teams to you know taking some great IP out of those universities, but also helping them build a team and scale it and get the funding and 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 and, and bring it to market. So we're we're at every step of the way. I think um, we also support uh, accelerators throughout Ireland. Uh, we have different themed accelerators. We have an Accelerate Green that's in its uh, second cohort uh, uh, in, in, in Ireland this year. That's that's very much focused on sustainability and on the green space. But we have food and we have pharma, we have digital health, we have a, a whole range of teams. But I think w- one of the things that kind of is resonating from, from the conversation is is that piece around innovation. You know, when, when, when we look to invest and support a startup, they have to have something of real value, real innovation, innovative solutions that needs a market or has a market opportunity. And, and those are the companies that we really get behind. We, we can't back all, all the entrepreneurs, but we can definitely get behind the ones that have scalable potential, something that is going to grow and scale outside of Ireland. And, uh, and, that, and, and we have two examples of that here on, on, the, on the podcast today, two companies that are thinking global from day one, thinking of international markets from day one, and, and we help them on that journey. So, yeah, I think I think there is a big community of startups in Ireland. And what we're seeing more of, and, and both speakers have alluded to this as well, we're, we're, we're seeing traditional businesses now look at the opportunities within the sustainability space. So you have Fexco and Kerry that are seeing the opportunity within the financial services ESG space uh, we have engineering companies that are traditionally maybe targeting construction companies. Now they're going after offshore wind, you know, logistics and 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 construction for offshore wind projects. So we are seeing traditional industries now tap into this emerging new sector of opportunities, and uh, and that's what we want to get behind. We we definitely want to increase the number of Irish businesses that bring sustainable solutions to markets such as the US. And actually this St. Patrick's Day, we're gonna have uh, companies all over the country engaging with customers, celebrating success and partnerships. And and our big theme this year is actually sustainability solutions. What what can Irish companies uh, bring to your business to help you become more sustainable, to uh, adhere to your ESG? Uh, and, And ultimately where I think this is going and we probably have heard this before on the show is, you know, this is going to be our license to trade. If 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 you're not going to be a uh, compliant, if you're not going to be moving uh, the dial when it comes to sustainability as a business yourself, you're not going to be in a position to trade and, and do business in a lot of markets. That's right. Um, you know, uh, Kahal, give a couple of ex- give an example of what's been the most valuable part of EI to your entrepreneurial jury jur- um, journey in the United States. And I'm going to have the same question, of course, for you, Kieran, as well. What's like what was the like the most uh, like you said? Oh, I'm so glad they're now they're with me. They're collaborating with me. They're supporting me, and this helped me get this over the top. I think that there's a range, right? So it's it's picking from a list. I think um, the original idea that we had, the EI can be very supportive in terms of funding as well, right? So we had an idea for exploration and we're an organization, um, you know, with a whole range of ideas for exploration. It's, it's, it's just trying to go through that validation journey and have the rigor early on of convincing somebody outside of your organization and outside of your echo chamber that there actually is a product. Equally, you know, the, the point on requiring external expansion beyond Ireland, I think for a lot of technology solutions, for it to be any sort of a meaningful business, you need an international market. We're, we're quite a small domestic market, right? And I think to have a really valuable business, um, certainly in a technology sense, talking about large global financial institutions, we needed to tap in early, not only to to, to some investigatory funding that we had, but equally um, market access and testing that market access uh, that we needed for, for some global institutions. That was extremely early on in our journey. I, I would say, you know, first six months or, or even before the first six months of the, of the business. But from there, we've just gone on leaps and bounds. We, we stay in touch. And I think another interesting point with EI is EI listens, right? We were at a, a round table relatively recently. Is EI very... Um, 
eager to engage with the startup community and, and mm. recognizing there there is more that can be done and how do we do that and, and putting supports in place. So I think for us, as I say, it, it's some of that, that early stage support, really early stage support to help kind of accelerate our journey. And then as early as you can, that market access to drive those data points, you know, for us to, to be able to fund our business and say that we do have something here. It is solving a global problem. It is worth investing in and drive on growth and uh, and have impact as a business. Paul, let me just ask you this. Is it like other collaborations and let's just say, and we're going to get over to Kieran in a second, talking about marriage, is it, is the more you put into it, the more you get out of it? And do you assign a person, a, hey, Susan, or hey, Bill, you're going to be our everyday, day and night liaison with EI, and, and you're going to help drive the success of our launch and scaling in the United States. How does that work? So I think as it relates to the United States in particular, it depends on the business unit that we, that we would have. Right? So for us, it's, it's quite business unit specific. We're a large corporate that sit above pace as, as the Exco group you know, with payments business, um, with dynamic currency conversion, property services, and a whole range of businesses that we have. So depending on the market need, we would have quite a wide range of people in the organization that would engage with various people in EI as an organization. Um, you know, and then we would have one primary contact that would work um, as well as, as, as a primary point of contact between the two. But we try to not restrict it intentionally. And obviously, there's always a risk there then that it can get distracted. We don't feel that happens. We feel actually by allowing the fluidity of market need driving the engagement. So as I say, I was dealing with different people when I was in Asia, with the, the, the group in Hong Kong, um, and I will switch uh, you know, to dealing with the required team uh, as needed. Understood. Kieran, for you, what's been the aha moment or let's just say the tipping point where you were so happy that with this venture, uh, with Green, Green Rebel, that EI was supporting you and collaborating with you to, to help accelerate your growth and launch launch and growth in the United States? Sure. I think, um, John, you know, the industry we're operating in is an emerging industry and right. a lot of markets, US included and Ireland and others, are really only finding their way here, you know. Yeah. But I think there's an absolute understanding in Enterprise Ireland's case that if we can use Ireland as a test bed, as a basin for innovation, we create something that's eminently scalable, that's repeatable and ultimately is exportable. Um, you know, looking at the US, you know, there's again, there's a lot of provision in the US and every market is quite different, but there is a protection around supply chain in the US uh, via the Jones Act. So for us to enter that market, it is about partnerships. It is about finding local companies mm. from which we, we can build those partnerships, get market access. And the best thing about Enterprise Ireland Ireland is if they don't know the answer, they know someone that does wow. and they will find the answers for you, you know. So I would say another great um, thing within Enterprise Ireland supporting this industry is that they formed the collaboration of all of the like minded companies in this space and kind of capsulize that within the Gale network. Mm. So we're not just exporting one company, we're exporting at a, at a country level, a huge range of capability. And we see that a lot, you know, our competitors at a, at a country level, the likes of Denmark, Scotland, Norway, who are maybe perceived to be a number of years ahead of us on the sustainability journey. You know, they have individual companies that are bigger than our entire supply chain. So Enterprise Ireland bringing together its entire supply chain and, and, and attacking that elephant rather than just one bite at a time, I think is a brilliant trait and a brilliant strategy to take. That's so that's so interesting. And you just said you launch your business model in Ireland and you work out on, on sort of a beta scale all the kinks, and then you look for scale when it comes to the United States. When you eventually come to the United States, and this is for both of you, Carl and Kieran, and I want to hear your thoughts on this as well, Aiden. When you come here, is it your thought that eventually what you're doing here and the work you're doing here with EI support is eventually going to scale and grow to be much bigger venture than what's going on in Ireland with your business venture? Kieran? Um, absolutely. I mean, the market and the demand for yeah. energy US is 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 huge. Um, yeah. You know, I suppose looking looking ahead, um, you know, offshore wind is is a unique industry yeah. because 
what it's starting to do is drive the jobs away from the hubs to New York or Dublin. And it's creating the social license to operate this industry in areas which have been previously underinvested. So we would see, you know, the coast of Massachusetts, the coast of California in particular, because, you know, on the west coast of Ireland, uh, which I know you haven't visited yet, John, but I'm sure it's on your bucket list. Yeah. You know, if we can harness the innovation there, you know, bringing that to the US and scaling in a far bigger market, you know, and again, the advantages of it being English speaking, the advantages of purely being Irish in that market does come to fruit. So looking strategically at the US as, you know, a way to scale far beyond our imagination in Ireland is is um, is, is is absolutely uh, there for us. Cahal, same goes for you. Is that the same theory? Yeah, I think the, the US is a really interesting proof point um, as a scaling business on a few fronts, right? Obviously, it opens immediately up in, into a much larger market. Um, but I think, you know, for me, something I would always look from, from US validation that is key beyond the size of the market is, is a really high bar in the US in general, right? Mm. But certainly mm. providing data, providing technology. If you can crack the market there, I think it tends to reflect very well on the business and you get that extra sense of we actually are on to something here we're not mm. just accidentally doing it you will not accidentally acquire large global banks based on a manhattan you have to be very very good at what you do and i think look some of it is learning as you go um you know but as we have scaled through that for me is the, is the key point that the expectation from large institutions operating out of the states even large domestic uh, organizations in the States, their expectations are, you know, at the absolute um, pinnacle of, of what global institutions expect. And so it, it just, it teaches you that, you that the governance you require as a business, the agility, the delivery, the customer support, the customer success function that you have. So it probably matured us very, very quickly as a business by, by getting those US clients, um, you know, and it, it got us to a place where we probably wouldn't be if we didn't uh, get that US market. And yes, of course, then you have, it's a larger market and you tend to be dealing um, with, with larger organizations, um, certainly. But for me, the bigger point actually would be if you can do it there, you can do it anywhere. I think it was a famous song somewhere, wasn't it? That's, a, that's our friend, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, so do you have, both of you have offices now in the United States? Is physicality important with regards to your 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 launch and scale in the United States? Um, I look, I'll, I'll jump in. I think for us, we have offices at Fexco. We do not at this pace. Um, I would say, you know, sustainability tends to be quite global in nature. Data is imminently global in nature. And obviously in a post-COVID world, it has allowed us, you know, to sell reasonably digitally uh, while having people that we can tap into, right. you know, whether it be right. through EI or whether it be through the broader Fexco network. Uh, we do not have uh, an office in the States and don't have, um, you know, the foreseeable future beyond utilizing the FEXCO resources, which we do have great relationships. We have offices in the United States. And so that will be our expansion path from here uh, for, for the U.S. market. Kieran, what say you about uh, physicality and the importance of physicality? Yeah, I mean, like Carl, it's it's on our roadmap now. So in the coming weeks uh, around St. Patrick's Day, we're hopeful to be over stateside. Um, also, you know, there's a, the, the global conference IPF is in New Orleans. There's worse places you can visit, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, for us, the question is where and what part of the US market is going to trigger first? You know, there's a lot, again, there's a lot of ambition being shown. There's a lot of, um, you know, gigawatt or gigabragawatts, maybe is what we call it. That's ambition. Where is it actually going to happen? Um, so physicality is important in our industry, but the, the workplace is changing and we already right. have scientists in the US supporting us, but they're doing so remotely. And even in, in Ireland, I'm in a lovely office here in Cork today. You know, the, 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 the dynamic of having to have people in physical structures is changing. Dang. So, you know, we're, we're trying to move with the times, but um, certainly in the next 12 months, um, you know, we would expect that we will be dipping our toe in in, in getting physicality in in the U.S. But where? Understood. That's the question. 
Understood. Okay. Aiden, you know, you have counterparts, as we discussed in our first show together, you have counterparts and colleagues that do what you do all around the world. Of course, you are the regional director of the Americas, but with 5,000 companies being represented by Enterprise Island all around the world. Talk a little bit about the journey. You know, what is typical, Aiden, what you've seen in your, your career at Enterprise Island? Is it is do companies that are, are fast growing and relevant and impactful startups in, in Ireland, do they come to the U.S.? first and then go to other parts and handled by other ones of your colleagues and what would be then the second the the the, the second jump uh and what's typical in terms of the journey of course i'm sure it's very very idiosyncratic to the industry that they cover but what have you seen to be a typical jumping point u.s and then where or is u.s not always the first jumping point yeah, no, it was a great question, John, and, and I think uh, we we got some insights from uh, Kieran and Cahill there previously uh, as to that uh, to that question. What what, what we typically see is um, just in context, the UK would be the number one export market for for, for Irish companies, uh, and actually the US is number two. So last year, Irish client enterprise Ireland client companies exported five point five billion in goods and services to the US. Wow. So, you know, I think that tells you something. It tells you that, going back to Cahill's point, if you can make it in the US, you can you can get the validation there. You can you can really you can really scale as a company. So sure. we would have a lot of our technology companies or data-driven companies that would do exactly that. Uh, to, to, to Kieran's point, where where is the real opportunity now? Where is the market the most developed and, we, and the path of least resistance? So absolutely, if you look at Europe and, and, and the UK waters, for instance, a company like Green Rebel, that's that's their that's their opportunity for their marketplace now. So we'll ask those questions of our of our client companies. What where's your market opportunity today? What can you what can you quickly win business at? And then where's the opportunity of scale? And and a lot of times our companies will go to a near market like the UK or, or indeed Europe, uh, improve the concept works, get a reference customer, but to really crack it, they might look at uh, if the market is already in existence, there's a market opportunity emerging, they'll come to the US. And, and what we try to do in, in that journey is help them get a beachhead, you know, okay, where where's the path to least resistance? Where can you, where can you build on existing relationships? And, and how can you break into this market? And so we we in Enterprise Ireland in the overseas office, we'll try and form that trusted advisor uh, position between potential customers to our clients and say, look, we have companies that need some validation as to what they're bringing to the market. They have really innovative solutions. Would you be willing to, to chat to them? So we, we kind of defuse that hard sales pitch and actually offer an opportunity for companies to come in and have a conversation as to, you know, can you help us validate our thinking on this? Is, is this a problem for you, or for your for, for your business? Is this what we're building, a, a, a real solution or an opportunity to solve that problem? And I think that's the real value that we can actually broker those conversations. We can get to the right people. And as Kieran said, if we don't know the answer, we'll find somebody that can and, and, and provide that insight in the market. Aiden, do you have an annual conference of your 5,000 uh, brands, that uh, portfolio brands that get together with um, wonderful and brilliant gentlemen like Kahal and, and Kieran, and they get a chance to network together and cross-share information? Or how does that work with Enterprise Island? Is there something like that? Yeah, so we 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 do industry industry specific events. If 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 going back to what Kieran uh, mentioned, you know, we have a team back at home very much focused on the offshore supply uh, chain opportunity globally, and and they saw an opportunity for lots of companies uh, like Green Rebel to come under one umbrella group and go to these bigger bigger businesses with. Uh, Here's all the solutions that Ireland can offer. And, and so that has worked in our favor. We've done it in other sectors as well, where we've 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 uh, helped support clusters of companies come into the market. The other thing that we do, and we have done some annual events where we bring uh, clients together, uh, and, and we've done it around startups. We have an annual startup showcase. We have a, an annual innovation in the food industry showcase. So we, we, we typically do it by sector, but... Probably more importantly is, 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 you know, what we can, you know, that companies like Kieran and, and, and Green Rebel and Cal in, 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 in Pace, they can pick up the phone and they have, they have somebody in Ireland that'll answer them many time of the day and, and, and work with them as to 
what what are they currently need? Do they have a, an opportunity in Asia? Do they have an opportunity in South America or in the US? Can we can we can we explore this? Can we jump on that? And and we have an account manager system at home that works where their development advisor will will figure that stuff out with them and get them the right support and the right people on the phone. For our listeners and viewers who've just joined us, this is this very special, the greenest edition of all of the Impact Podcast. This is the St. Patrick's Day special. We've been honored to have with us today Ada McKenna, who's the Regional Director of Americas for Enterprise Ireland. You can find Enterprise Ireland at enterprise-ireland.com. Kieran Ivers, who's the CEO of Green Rebel. You can find Green Rebel at Green Rebel. Dot IE and Kahal Foley, who's the CEO of Pace. You can find Pace at pace-esg.com. All of those, all of those websites will be in our show notes, and plus other information about these great companies and, and, and enterprises. Um, you know, before we wind up today, I want to just hear your vision, long-term vision for your for your important and impactful companies. Kahal, the, you know, what what's your real goals for Pace? If you when you lay in bed at night and you think about how things are going and where you are on the journey here, what What's your ultimate goals and what's next and what are you most excited about for Pace in the coming 2024 and beyond? Well, I think continuing to grow and, and scale at Pace is, is ultimately what we're about and, and getting that validation. And I think when you when you imagine something, you build it and someone buys it, that's a really special feeling. And, and the great thing in a, in a scale-up is, is you get that on, on quite a frequent basis in a new space. Um, within aviation, we're focused on three primary pillars, right? So that's building out the platform and, and the data services set that we that we have, finding additional use cases for our data, such as corporate travel and, and consignment travel and, and various other pieces, and monetizing that advisory element that we have within our business, that informing the market piece. So, you know, a huge amount of activity across aviation. And beyond aviation, you know, commercial real estate, this is, a, this is an area that has huge room for expansion so we'll continue to have an innovation arm that will look at the next wave of analytical opportunities within sustainability as i say such as maritime such as commercial real estate and road transport you know we'll, we'll keep that track of activity going as well so you know onwards and upwards really from here and continuing to scale what we have and build new product and 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 Carl, when you, once you continue to scale in the United States and continue to prove out your <laughs> your 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 mission and, and vision for for pace, then do you go back to Enterprise Island and say, okay, now we believe we have a, this this could be applicable in in China or in the in the UAE or in South America? Do you keep going back to the well of Enterprise Island to help keep continue to spread the great word about pace? I think and it's not only as we scale pace, but as we add new products or, or new businesses alongside pace in, in that product suite, um, you know, we can go back to that earliest iteration of products. And we're, we're actually looking at doing that at the moment and collating the next round of innovation within sustainability technology to sit alongside pace. And at the scale inside of, of the journey, you know, at the moment, we've been very much focused, to be honest, on Europe and the U.S., um, you know, so next up would be Asia, as you rightly point out, and how we could help just follow that same path and, you know, help, um, you know, continue the journey that we've been on, getting connected into Asia and scaling out from there. What's your vision, Kieran? I mean, you have you have a tough hurdle to 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 uh, climb here. I mean, I mean, your last venture, you had a huge successful relationship with Enterprise Island. You also met and found and married your wife. I mean, what do you expect here? What's your vision here in this in this go round with Enterprise Island and for Green Rebel? What's the future look like in 2024 and beyond? Yeah, look, um, I suppose in any business you set up. You think you're going in one direction and business takes you in another direction. So, you know, at the moment we're running a number of different services and, you know, there's a, there's opportunity everywhere. And it's for us, it's being laser focused in, in where we can really maximize the opportunity, you know, to encompass all what we do into one sentence is to be seen as a, a standard bearer uh, for data provision within offshore wind, um, you know, you know, we have revenue targets and all that, but that's only achieved with our focus on people and a, retaining and attracting the very, very best people, you know, doing business the right way, doing good by our clients. If you get all of that right, good things will happen. Uh, but, you know, right now, my ambition is for world domination, if that's the answer you're looking for. 
but there is so much opportunity um, in our business that, you know, the Green Rebel today, you know, I'm sure we'll go on five or six different journeys in other directions, which will um, which will all be interesting in their own right. I love what you're both doing, you know, and I and and both of these are very unique sectors that we've never covered on this show before. And we we get to really have so such wonderful guests like all three of you. Do you have a lot of competition in your space right now, uh, uh, Kieran? It sounds like such an interesting niche. Uh, yeah, there there is competition, but the ambition globally for what we do is leading the simple laws of supply and demand. That's right. So the oppor- the opportunity for companies stateside and other places, I like to think that Green Rebel being a first mover is making every mistake and having every success possible that's beating a path down for companies like us to follow because too many of our competitors are coming from oil and gas industries into this space. Green Rebel is set up uh, green to begin with and green is our focus. So, you know, I, I would say that the, the ambition that we're showing is is repeatable and scalable for other companies, that's, too. That's, um, you know, that's great. Hey, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to give the I'm going to give the last word to our good friend, Aidan McKenna, who was so kind enough to put this show together. And he brought two. I mean, he made two uh, sustainability superstars super happy today. And I think we've hurt the feelings of eight hundred and ninety eight of his of his wonderful <laughs> portfolio companies. But Aidan, I'm going to leave it to you. You know, this is St. Patrick's Day. This is our St. Patrick's Day special. You know, you've put together and curated this wonderful show with these two brilliant individuals. Please share some of your vision for Enterprise Island and Ireland in 2024 and beyond. Uh, thank you very much again for having us, John. And, and, and I think um, one of the things I'd like to emphasize at this St. Patrick's Day, it's a time that we celebrate not just uh, St. Patrick and, and all that's gone before, but actually our relationship with our the U.S. And we, we're going to have a huge presence in all our major cities here in the U.S. this St. Patrick's Day, where Irish companies that we've just heard from will be able to take a key customer and celebrate success, recognize their partnerships at the at the, the the real problems they're trying to solve collectively together. And I think, you know, because we're green and it's St. Patrick's Day, if any of your podcast listeners are listening that they need help with their sustainability agenda, Enterprise Ireland has companies that can solve those problems. You know, Enterprise Ireland can be the place where they come to initially to figure out is there companies that have solutions to real sustainability challenges. And within our portfolio, we absolutely have. We've heard heard from two fantastic companies here today, but we have a whole uh, portfolio more that can offer real solutions to various industries. And again, thank you for the opportunity. If if listeners are tuning in, visit Enterprise hyphenireland.com and and you can source Irish companies through our website that have real solutions, innovative solutions to some of the challenges that we face. And thank you all. I mean, for all of our guests here, Cahal Foley, Kieran Ivers, Aidan McKenna, thank you for not only taking the time to uh, share your mission, your vision, and all the great and important and impactful work that you're all doing to uh, to uh, not only grow your businesses and come to America and share the great important things that you're doing, but thank you all for making the world a better place. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by Engage. Engage is a digital booking platform revolutionizing the talent booking industry. With thousands of athletes, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and business leaders, Engage is the go-to spot for booking talent, for speeches, custom experiences, live streams, and much more. For more information on Engage or to book talent today, visit letsengage.com. This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com.